The following You and the Law program is provided as a public service of the Chicago Bar Association. The statements made and views expressed in this program are those of the participants. The participants' views do not necessarily reflect the views of the Chicago Bar Association. This program is for informational purposes only. It does not provide legal advice. Vic Henderson, I'm president of the Chicago Bar Association, and welcome to our series talking to some of the top judges and lawyers here in the city of Chicago. Uh, to, we have the privilege now of meeting with Bill Hooks, who has a reputation of being one of the toughest, sometimes meanest, fiercest trial lawyers in the city of Chicago. Bill is a former president of the Cook County Bar Association, which is the oldest black bar association in the country. He also has the honor and privilege of being the first black president of the federal bar which is also one of the most prestigious bar associations in the country. Uh, and uh, Bill is uh, just a, known as a street fighter and a tough guy. So with that, Bill, welcome. Thank you, and also congratulations on being elected as the president of the Chicago Bar Association. Well, thank you so much. I'm very proud of you. Bill, let me ask you a few questions. I want to start off with some background information. Uh, you were raised on the south side of Chicago in Woodlawn, is that right? Yes, sir. And. Was Woodlawn an all-black community at that time when you were growing up? When I was growing up, it was a completely African-American community. Uh, and uh, the transition that had taken place to an all-African-American community about, I'd say, at least 15 to 20 years earlier. And so what time period was that? Uh, I graduated from grade school in 68. I went to McCosh, which is now named Emmett Till. Uh, I lived on 64th and St. Lawrence. And I ended up graduating from high school in 1971, Limbloom High School. And so how did growing up on the South Side, and in particular in the Woodlawn community, affect you not only as a person, but as the lawyer that you are today? When I grew up in Woodlawn, there were a lot of opportunities for youth. Uh, the only negotiations that occasionally I would have is, involved me going through uh, two or three different gang territories. Number one, to go to school, which really wasn't that big of a problem because we were on the bus. But uh, after school, I would go home and walk to work at 62nd and Woodlawn, which was the Woodlawn Library, 62nd and Kimbark. And that's where I got my first exposure to negotiating with groups that may not uh, care too much about you. I got a chance to negotiate my entry into the Blackstone Ranger neighborhoods. And later in high school, I had to negotiate with the Blackstone Rangers to return clothing items they had decided to take from the limb some of the Limbaloom students when I was uh, a student and when I was the president of the Black Student Association. So it kind of gave me some negotiation skills others may not have received such so early in life. Now, now after you got out of the Woodlawn community, did you go to college or did you go into service? I, I went to uh, Loop College initially because, believe it or not, I was going to be a police officer. Uh, after Loop College, I got a scholarship to DePaul University. And while uh, in college, I affiliated with what they call the platoon leader class with the Marine Corps. I tested in and ended up going to Quantico, Virginia during the summers to train to be a Marine officer upon graduation. Now, what made a black guy from the south side of Chicago in Woodlawn go into the Marines? That's not normal career path for, for any black person, you know, especially from the south side to want to go into the Marines. When I was... Uh, Actually, I was thinking about actually going to, to Vietnam as a military police officer when I was in college because I was too young to become a police officer. I was, uh, at, that, at the time, I was 19 or 20, and you had to be 21, so I tested to go into the Army and uh, as a military police officer. My test scores came back, and based upon having been in ROTC and also I was an Eagle Scout, uh, apparently I tested pretty high in certain areas that made, they made me retake the test. And I retook the test in front of a colonel and maxed it out. At that time, one of the senior Army sergeants there uh, basically called the Marine Corps and said, look, we got this young kid there and uh, they're trying to enlist him in the Army and they want, they're going to guarantee him military police, but you all should talk to him. So a black major from the Marine Corps, Al Moore called me, said, look, I got a tip that you want to go into uh, the service. He says, you need to go into the Marine Corps as an officer. So he maxed their tests. Uh, I've got good words, and we, have a, we had a confederate amongst the Army recruiters, 
and they've told me that we, I need to talk to you. So I talked with this Marine Corps major and uh, tested out and ended up being convinced to stay in college. And he couldn't promise me military police because that's not what they do in the Marine Corps. But he told me the closest they had was the intelligence field and uh, actually was no guarantee, but I ended up in the intelligence field by hook or by crooks, they so, so to speak. Uh, they, they cleared me while I was going through officer basic school without me knowing it, and I got a chance to work as a signals intelligence electronic warfare officer for my tour. Uh, but, but didn't you have some fear or concern as a black man from the south side of Chicago going into, a, into the Marine Corps? Let me explain that to you. At 14 or 15, when I was working in a library, I got a chance to confront 17, 18 year olds or 19 year old kids who at that time were problems in terms of gang affiliation and negotiated with them. At the time I was being asked to go to the Marine Corps, the challenge was only 1.5% of the officer corps was black. However, the Marine Corps had a reputation of being the toughest branch of the service that panned out once I got there and I saw it as a challenge uh, and I, I didn't want anything easy and the Marine Corps gave me everything I wanted. The officer corps has in fact become more African American uh, it was a proving contest for me. I always admired and, and the Marines in comparison with the other services when I studied this in grammar school and high school. So a chance to be a Marine Corps lieutenant to me was kind of the ultimate. And, uh, and in fact, one of my classmates now is only is the second three-star general, black three-star general Marine Corps has ever had. And I got a chance to call and congratulate him a few weeks ago. But it was a branch of the service that didn't give you anything. It gave you a chance to prove yourself, and it made a level playing field, in my opinion, for those who wanted to be Marine officers. And it is an affiliation that I will take to the grave with me as a positive ex experience. Now, how did you find your way from the Marine Corps then to, to law school and becoming a lawyer? I always wanted to be a lawyer, and actually I always wanted to be a Marine Corps officer. Um, from the age of eight, I decided I wanted to be a lawyer, but I wanted to go by, to become a lawyer by way of the Marine Corps. And those plans were laid early. If you look at my graduation notes going out of the eighth grade, I said I want to be a lawyer. Uh, there are similarities between uh, being a trial lawyer and being a battlefield commander, for lack of another word, or a strategist. And it all has to do with preparation, uh, execution, and follow-up. And there are many similarities between planning for a trial and planning for a military engagement. And uh, Every aspect, I can draw analogies between every aspect of preparing for trial and every aspect for preparing to plan a, a, a military event. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about you being uh, as a trial lawyer. Again, as I stated at the onset, you're one of the most you know, feared, tough trial lawyers in the city. Do, do you feel that your background as a Marine in some ways may, maybe makes you a little too tough as a lawyer? I don't know how they ended up. I guess Chicago Magazine had an article they, or they ran a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Uh, I was honored to be with a group of lawyers that were being evaluated as good lawyers. Uh, they picked the title of the, uh, of the article. Uh, I don't certainly try to be tough. Uh, every aspect of my life helped shape me to what I am today. And, I, and probably growing up in Woodline had something to do with it and probably working in the intelligence field as a Marine officer. And later I went back as a judge advocate. Uh, may have shaped that, but I was the same way in the Marine Corps. I mean, there were people in the Marine Corps that would say, you know, were you, are you like this because of where you grew up or whatever? And it was never anything negative. It was they could count on me accomplishing a mission, even if the mission was difficult, even if the mission required you to work 24. In one case, when I was in Cuba, Guantanamo, I was a watch officer, and we actually worked about 48 hours straight. And to me, it was a golden opportunity. It was nothing that I... I, uh, that was bad about it. I was so glad that they trusted me on watch for a 48 hour period of time in a dangerous situation where my boss did not want me to leave uh, the area in which I was doing the watch officer duties. And we were monitoring uh, Cuban jets that were uh, in close pro proximity to the naval base and I got a chance to actually have a hands-on experience and make some decisions and working with the Department of Defense over the phone and with the national security uh, officials out of DC. And this is all at the age of 22 years of age.